jet age has created a problem of pilot escape, even of survival, for men who fly planes faster than the speed of sound. For this reason, the United States Air Force and its contractor, Coleman Engineering Company, designed Project SMART, the supersonic military air research track. Engineers planning work at Project SMART can measure terrific forces pilots endure. Sleds hurtling along the track at speeds up to 1,500 miles an hour can catapult dummies or other test objects over a precipice for recovery by parachute. Otherwise, such data could be learned only from actual pilot bailouts at great risk of equipment and especially of men. Most of western United States was searched for a flat tableland long enough for a two and a half mile track ending at a precipice where the flight escape sequence could be simulated. Hurricane Mesa in southwestern Utah near Zion National Park met the requirements. Its climate had sunshine for photography, little rain, snow or temperature change. The Mesa had a solid rock foundation for the track. This meant construction at minimum cost and stability to withstand the terrific speed of test sleds. After aerial mapping was completed in 1954, engineers directed crews carving an 18,000-foot road, rising 1,500 feet in hairpin turns to the summit. More than 200 men toiled through the winter and spring of 1955 completing this access road to a spot reachable before that time only by horseback or afoot. Heavy machinery was then taken to the top. It was rugged work moving many tons of rock and earth. There was no disposal problem. Excess was merely shoved over the cliff. For a wide sweep of camera coverage, Scrub trees had to be cleared and burned. Much water was needed. This must come from the canyon of the Virgin River near the base of the mesa, the stream jokingly called the river where fish swim backward to keep dust out of their eyes. Workmen had to string 15,000 feet of pipe up the jagged cliffs to pump water 1,800 feet vertically to storage on the mesa. Trenching to bedrock for the track foundation extended from the northern shoulder of the tabletop mountain 12,000 feet southward to the cliff's rim. Concrete and steel anchored the foundation to the mesa's thick sandstone cap. Special forms were used in concreting the track base to give engineering exactness. 39-foot crane rails were hauled by truck to the summit. These had to be mated and fused into two continuous 12,000-foot lengths. By doing 2,000 feet per day, the job was completed in the amazing time of 16 days. To set the track in tension and avoid expansion or contraction, base anchors were welded on an afternoon when rail temperature was 115 degrees. Then, crews bolted the track down from the center toward the ends. Telescope and target alignment gave close tolerance. Looking down, the completed track does not vary one-tenth of an inch from a straight line in its entire length. And when it was completed in 1955, it was the longest continuous rail weld in the United States. Headquarters buildings and workshops were put up, concrete bunkers to protect firing crews, telemetering towers to receive radio data from the sleds, camera towers for photographing runs, Everything was in readiness on the contract target date, July 8, 1955. Rather than risk the lives of men, dummies or other test objects are used. When Hurricane Sam the dummy has instruments in place in his chest, he's ready to be harnessed with the personnel chute. Sam, the anthropomorphic dummy, has the weight and dimensions of the human body and carries instruments to measure the terrific forces encountered in ejection. At the same time, harness, flight suits, gloves, lap belts, ejection seats, parachutes, and other equipment can be tested. Now Sam can be hoisted aboard the sled. 
wired to transmit data which men in the blockhouse will record and translate later into detailed reports. It's time now to bring the rockets out of the earthen igloo where they're kept for safety. These will propel the pusher or locomotive of the pointed-nosed aluminum sled. Project Smart's red fire truck is alerted. Nozzles at the firing pad are tested. Every precaution is taken to protect men who handle the rockets. Now the yellow flag goes up on the blockhouse mast. This is a preliminary warning to crewmen at all stations. Photographic coverage of every phase of the run is very important. The camera crewmen are making final adjustments at the mobile tracking camera and at six fixed camera stations. The speed of a particular run may be varied according to the type, number, and combination of rockets used. The most careful accuracy is essential because everything in the firing sequence will happen with split-second timing. These boosters will give the final spurt of speed. Small timers on the sled and rails will pick up the proper signals to trigger booster rocket firing as well as ejection. When the sled blasts down the track, its steel slippers will grip the rails. Sled and rockets are now in readiness. This is the critical moment. The rockets are being armed or fused. Up goes the red flag. Final warning is broadcast. The warning siren can be heard over the whole track area. The countdown starts. Men at these instruments will record every phase of the run. The camera tracker is focused on the sled. Four, three, two, one. Hurricane Sam is out of the sled. He's over the cliff and his chute has opened. This is the sequence that gives scientists an opportunity to measure wind blast, deceleration, the pull of gravity forces, and those other enemy elements in pilot escape. From firing time to ejection, the run lasted less than six seconds. It all happened so fast, let's take another look. A few seconds after Sam ejected, retro rockets fired, slowing the sled. Then its arrestor hook could seize the bridle of the squeezer piston brake, bringing it to a halt at the cliff's rim. Although instruments recorded many phases of the sled run and ejection, examination of the dummy itself will complete the story. Men of the recovery crew must combine mountain climbing skill with technical training. Hurricane Sam came through the ordeal with instruments intact, but that was a run in the relatively slow range. You see him donning helmet and mask for a speedier trip, faster than the speed of sound. This run will carry more powerful rockets. And you see the horizontal water break, which will stop it in the high speed range where a braking load of more than 300,000 pounds may be exerted. Sam is off for that faster ride. Hurricane Sam cleared the sled by 30 feet, sailed out more than 1,000 feet from the cliff's edge, and drifted 1,500 feet to the valley floor near the canyon of the Virgin River. While the recovery crew goes to pick him up, we can backtrack to the mesa and see in slow motion what happened when the sled hit the water break. A scoop under the sled is picking up water from the trough between the rails and throwing it back horizontally at a 180 degree angle. It would be much the same thing if you tried to stop an automobile traveling 100 miles an hour within a space of two and a half feet. Closer examination shows that Sam had a narrow escape. As you can see, the seat chute was ripped by wind blast, and the debris almost smashed the camera eye through which you're seeing this action. The study of trajectories may prevent such accidents from happening to pilots. But Hurricane Sam is undismayed by accidents. 
Here he is, ready for a very high-speed test. As faster planes are built, so must escape techniques keep pace to protect the men who fly them. Upward and downward seat ejection, capsule ejection, or the new skip flow generator methods must be explored at supersonic speeds. A satisfactory escape system for each plane must be evolved. Project Smart is a valuable tool in finding the escape answer in supersonic flight. This is a must of the United States Air Force in maintaining superior quality of equipment not only for combat effectiveness, but in saving the lives of fighting men who are flying higher and faster than man has ever flown. <laughs> 